Welcome to Proofpoint's how-to video tutorial series, which is aimed at sharing Proofpoint's professional services best practices for configuring the Proofpoint protection server's features and functionalities. This video tutorial demonstrates how to create a policy route within the Proofpoint protection server, or PPS. Policy routes are an essential part of defining mail flows within Proofpoint's protection server. This includes both inbound and outbound mail, as well as specific types of mail flow within PPS. Policy routes are later used in PPS to affect which modules and rules are applied to a given message. To access the policy routes, select the Systems tab, System Module, and Policy Routes page. Policy routes contain a set of conditions. If a message matches the conditions, it is tagged with the policy route ID. Policy routes are not mutually exclusive in that most messages will be tagged with multiple policy routes. There are many policy routes already defined in PPS. Some of these are used to establish traditional inbound and outbound mail flows. Others define internally generated mail. Policy routes can be created to manipulate how messages are routed through the system and define what rules and modules are triggered. When building a policy route, it's important to understand that policy routes are limited to the metadata of the message and cannot use the message body or attachments. In this example, we will define a policy route that identifies mail from a certain external domain which is being sent to members of a specific Active Directory group within the organization. This is a common way to selectively enforce certain rules or modules. For this tutorial, we'll assume that the Active Directory user imports are already configured. Click on the Add button in the Policy Routes page. Next, input a Policy Route ID and then set the conditions. Route IDs can have letters and numbers, but they cannot contain spaces and are rendered in lowercase. We will use the term Example for our ID description and then click on the Add Condition button. Add the condition Envelope Sender and then set the operator to Is in Domain. Next, enter Example.com within the value field. Click on the Add and New Condition button. This will keep the window open to add more conditions. To add an additional condition, set the condition connector to AND, allowing both conditions to be true. Set the condition to Envelope Recipient Belongs to Group and the operator to Equals. Click on the Select Group button. For this example, choose the Test Group. Click on the arrow button to move the group to the right-hand side and then click the Done button. Select the Add Condition button to complete the process of adding conditions to the policy route. Finally, click the Save Changes button at the top of the screen. Now that we have created our example policy route, which is displayed with a name and description, we can navigate to our Rules page to show how the policy route is enforced. Select the Email Protection tab, Email Firewall Module, and Rules page. Begin by selecting the XE strip rule. The Policy Route Selection Area is found near the top of the page. The Policy Routes Selection Area has two options, a Restrict Processing and a Disable Processing checkbox. When selected, both options display a list of available policy routes on the left and a list of either Require Any Of or Disable For Any Of on the right. If neither box is checked, the module or rule will apply to all mail. If only the Restrict box is checked, then only messages tagged with the policy routes on the right will trigger the rule or module. Likewise, if only the Disable box is checked, 
then all messages except those with the policy routes on the right will trigger the rule or module. If both boxes are checked, then only messages tagged with policy routes from the restrict list that are also not tagged with a policy route from the disable list will trigger the module or rule. Let's suppose that we want this rule to only apply to inbound mail, but we also want to exempt mail from a specific outside domain to one group within the organization. First, check the box for Restrict Policy Routes. Add the default inbound policy route to the right side. The default inbound is a built-in policy route that defines inbound mail. Next, check the box for Disable Policy Routes. Add the example policy route created earlier to the right side. Once finished, remember to save the changes. The policy routes column for the XE strip rule now shows the default inbound policy route is allowed while the example policy route is denied. This now matches the choices made within the rule properties. Thank you for watching our brief how to video tutorial on how to create a policy route within the Proofpoint Protection Server, or PPS. For additional information on our products, visit our knowledge base at https colon forward slash forward slash proofpointcommunities.force.com. For questions, comments, or feedback on this tutorial, please email us at training at proofpoint.com.